Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Sarah Chiu again on this program on basket starfish, um, talking about our human language core. That I believe all languages are related, and no language is isolated. And the language that we speak are now remnants of the original language. So um, you will see uh, that uh, I will use this basket starfish to show you how we share a common core, and the model of the family tree uh, needs to be changed because as soon as we look at things like that, we will begin to have our hierarchy, and. Of, uh, and this uh, research also show you a feminine side of uh, understanding things and um, okay here we are uh, thank you very much for tuning in uh, again this week I'm going to continue with uh, what I did last week uh, the formation of um, this uh, Sorry, the formation of uh, our human concepts from the very basic, basic uh, um, little component. And as I said, the atomic com component, you know, as you see, the atomic, the A starts with an A. So I will show you how that little A uh, started as a bullhorn shape that actually uh, form a lot of our human concepts. Uh, I'm going to just start now. Um, I have actually uh, something like 22 slides today I really don't think that I can finish it but I hope I can get some of my points across um, as soon as you can understand language in that way you will understand that a uh, human being has been communicating with each other since a long long time ago and uh, I think uh, the uh, family tree business is actually uh, very outdated we should look at language in a completely different point of view okay I'm going to start Start now. Give me one second. Okay. Oh. Mm. Sorry, something's different today. I cannot bring up the. Okay, just give me one second. I'll do it in another way. Okay. Okay, there we are. We're going to start in a second. Yeah, um, again, as a jot to the accepted thinking that uh, uh, a shared verbal language existed before writing. And because I will show you tons of uh, pictographs that share the same sound and the same meaning across different language families uh, and regardless of time and distance. And I think there is too much attention paid to the grammatical differences. And then uh, this time I'm going to put a little bit of stress on the um, early alphabets were also ideographic. And uh, I'm going to show you an integrated East and West uh, point of view because my ability of able to read pictograph and together with my travel experiences, I've been moving around for the last uh, 30 years or so. And for uh, um, within this 20, 30 years, more than um, 20 years, I concentrated on the chasing uh, of the uh, different forms of writing. And uh, again, uh, this time you will again look at uh, the atomic formation of our foundation uh, of a human concepts and the A and the K and the G sound, you, you will see it again and again, okay? Um, uh, to get you prepared for this, uh, you have to understand that nothing is linear like uh, most of the time that uh, the linguist would tell you that a language, you know, uh, goes on to another language and everything is like a straight line. And for the physics of the whole universe, for the fast connection of making senses, uh, we always follow the um, principle of economy. Uh, even our brain follows the same thing. As you can see, that's why uh, the, our brain is globe-like, it's never linear. And uh, as you can see, the synapses here and each node actually uh, sparks to another node. And actually, this circuit form is actually the, the, a, the most economic way of saving time and spaces and you will see uh, the interlacing etymology uh, nodes. They are just uh, all intertwining with each other. So uh, be prepared that I will throw you across from culture to culture. You just have 
to be open-minded enough to accept that we are basically the same. And uh, first of all, uh, the I show you the horn animal in our writing systems, and of course you will see the horn animal actually become the leading uh, alphabet of the word animal because it, it is a soul being which moves, right? And then the other will be because of the horn, you will also have the, this English word carrying tin because uh, the uh, Greek word kara is still uh, means the horn. Okay, the first batch will be the Sumerian, you will see all these, the M and L, and then uh, the Proto-Sinaitic will be L, which uh, later become the alpha and this is the Chinese we have a writing like this called R okay where we will describe a female actually this type of head is called R Tao okay and and of course you know uh, when a little girl uh, put on this kind of uh, hairstyle it actually uh, in shows that she has all the potential of fertility and everything's good to come okay and uh, in order to um, uh, separate all these we also have the word now in in uh, Cantonese and oh by the way uh, the sound system I use mainly are the ancient dialects the Mandarin I will use it to show you the mutation of sound okay and then we say now right there and if you uh, want to look at all the Coptic system uh, which in the Egyptian area and the Mariotic and the and the Faisto and also Linear B or the Mediterranean area interestingly you will see they all use the uh, animal head to see all this U, O, A, all the vowel sounds okay and this R you will see that this is the Greek Upsilon, okay, so it's still this is R or U is also a vowel. Why is that? Because um, as you can see the Chinese sign which always shows an unseen energy um, You can actually understand it as the R A Only a living being will pronounce this sound, okay, so all this will be the living entity showing the living entity and of course the A, the ancient Greek A will be like this for, um, it gradually become the alpha, the alpha will be the leader that's why it's leading the writing system and then on the other side the Sumerian has another um, uh, bull like this with a horn animal uh, this can be any type of animal not necessarily a bull bull it can be a deer or, or, or ram anything like that so it's a bull and then the hieroglyph has a car which means cattle and also the soul okay and actually the Chinese uh, in, in Cantonese still maintain this gu gu actually for us is a female cow okay not a male and then uh, the ga is actually a strong bull and then the kin or kin is actually also described a very very strong bull and um, uh, Sanskrit follows the same sound, you know, they have the go, gu, gava, all this means cattle or cow. And as you can see, uh, the Greek, uh, in order to show the, the, the soul itself, it turned into a human being with this uh, horn up there on the head. Look at this and look at this. You will see the similarity, how the ancients understand things very different from how you understand things now, okay? And then, um, interestingly, uh, actually, if we I say uh, other than this uh, female as a atau as a little kid and I will call this type of hairstyle guy on, on in also different kind of Chinese dialect it will be kai ke ki all this will be uh, in different Chinese dialect uh, meaning the bun itself and then um, if you go back to the very origin it actually means something sharp a horn like thing you know so the bun itself is a horn like thing on your head so of course you know in the west you'll be very familiar with us Alexander the Great with the horn itself and of course the, 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 this form will become the copper the head and it will become what you always know as the K letter, okay? And I want to un uh, explain a little bit about this acronym. Even the acronym itself is formed by the A and the K sound, okay? Don't be confused by this C. And um, the leader of the alphabetic and the uh, uh, syllabary system are all lead by this okay of course you you know the a and then if you uh, imagine the car the soul right there 
and then this is the Indic system, the Sanskrit ancient uh, uh, India, and then this is the R, and in R actually and the and the Ka. These two are the this is the first of the vowel. This is the first of their writing system in consonant, and but then the uh, uh, Indians, you know, uh, all the consonant have an intrinsic a right there. Why is it there like that? Because the Atman itself, the word itself, means the soul. You can know that this is actually means the intrinsic soul. Imagine the K just appear without putting an R after that. You can never make any sound. So a K is not living unless the R is following. The soul is following right there. Okay, this is a Chinese symbol. If you turn it around, it also becomes the A. And you will understand in the Western world, Alma and anima is also the soul itself and even in the uh, Japanese system which actually affected by the Buddhism and uh, which came down from the from from the Indian line and the modern uh, uh, Japanese writing uh, the vowel will still uh, led by the ah sound and then this is the ka or ga sound, okay? So no matter how you write, this two sound is still leading the writing system until this very day. So you will see that a lot of the system, uh, even in Western uh, writing system, you are still using the ideograph or the terminative as, you, as we call it, okay? The Sumerian, again, this is alf at the female cow, and this alf, and then the hieroglyph, and this is the Chinese. The Chinese has a writing like this. It means the, 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 the food itself. And But you can see that the soul part is right there. But it actually maintain all this sound. Uh, actually, there are a lot more sounds, which I don't want to confuse you. But the very basic is R. It, it maintain the R sound, R sound. And then the G. Uh, G and then the K in another uh, uh, Southern dialect. Okay? And then... And you see the soul right there, and then the Greek will be alpha and the kappa. In the uh, Greek itself, the kappa, the cap, actually also means the uh, related to the head. Okay, and you will see a bunch of uh, Greek words which means uh, archi and it means head, and this acto actually means the leader, and the kara is the head, and the kinesis is the motion. Uh, without this uh, head movement, the soul you cannot move yourself. So you will see that the in English word, the act is led by the A, A right there, and then the word kinesis is actually led by the K right there. So you can actually look at even English is a determinative right there to tell you what you are supposed to understand. Okay, so I will show you quickly. This is terminatives in Greek. And this is the alpha, this is the kappa, the, the head. And then uh, I will show you a bunch of words. I highlighted, you see all this, either it's A or the K. Akra, akto, ako, all this means lead or the leading thing. And then the ahi, and then the aho, the leader, and then the kara, kupe, the head. And um, you can see that the word animal also comes from this A. The creature, the kursang, uh, actually comes from the kappa. And I'll show you a bunch of animals in Greek. You can see that all this, the ram, the goat, the lamb, they are all started with the A or related with the, the G or K sound, okay? And then even the deer. And then uh, also on this side, the creo is actually the ram. And then the kara, the goat, the deer, you see all this, they, they actually served as a marker. And then, um, of course, from Greek to Latin, uh, Arias is the ram. You see the A still leading. And actually, the R, you have to pay attention. R uh, gradually also takes a lot of the form as the head or, as well. Raja and Rigo and King, the Rex also become the head, okay? But uh, now I'm, co I'm concentrating on the A and the K, G sound, okay? So you see all these are led by the all this A and the G or K sound, okay? 
So uh, people will argue with the letter frequency. So when you talk about that, you have to ask, you know, if you want to be scientific and critical, uh, you have to ask according to who this letter frequency and whose lens you are using, you know, to, to understand this. And actually, if you're counting the letter, are you paying attention to the sound frequency? So they are actually two different things. So this A-E-I-O-U, the living sound, the vowels, and act, and actually um, you have to pay attention if you're counting these vowels of course you know no no wonder all this will be the uh, uh, first count in the letter frequencies you know but you also have to pay attention sometimes the J and the Y also came from the I itself uh, I give you one example and and I'll give you a, an, an example later and the U sometimes you know confused with the W and the V in times terms of writing and of course you know this this is what you call the the Jupiter, right? But in Latin, in the early Latin, it's actually Jupiter. It's actually written with a vowel, but it's only later that it become a J. So when you be count letters, so do you take these matters into into uh, consideration? You have to think about that. And also the K, the mutation of the K. Now, if you look at the internet, they will tell you, tell you K wasn't used a lot. But then, if you look at all this mutation, the K, K sound, and also sometimes it's transcribed into Q, and then the C sometimes is uh, also came from the K. So you have to put all this into consideration before you understand the sound frequency of this k, k sound okay so this letter frequency is not very scientific uh, according to what I see now and also I want you to also pay attention to the G some sometimes you know it also changed to the soft J as well so the counting letter method is not very scientific when it comes to the original formation of writing itself okay so uh, I want you to also pay attention now to the relation of the head and the calf and as you see the ancient pay a lot of attention to someone having a strong leg a strong foot okay the calf itself is the indication of a good leader because whoever can walk can run a lot or whoever is strong who did a lot of exercise you will see that they have a very strong calf and then who will move this strong calf but a very strong head right so uh, you will see from the very beginning Sumerian food you know they actually turn it upside down and have a little battery thing like right there to show the food and then the Chinese too you know we have we flip it this way and that way but you will see that it's always with that little uh, bull head right there and then of course again the car in hieroglyph means uh, the cattle and also the soul which push you forward the Greek is the kafali the head and then the Chinese actually, uh, the Cantonese actually maintain the uh, the sound cup. Cup is actually the count of the unit of heads, right? And then, uh, of course, it's very closely related to Latin. The caput, uh, the, uh, the what you call the captain, the cap, is all related to the head. So all this sound were, were related in ancient time already. And then... I want you to understand the ancient were very, very spiritual. So if you try to uh, do a language research without understanding the spiritual aspect of the of the ancient, uh, this is an uh, almost impossible because the whole logic system is already built into it a long, long time ago. So uh, the A actually, uh, when you become the action, it actually uh, connected to the go and the come because these are all movements, okay? and in a circular way too and again I show you the Chinese writing with all this concerned sound the Sumerian have this boot is gu, and then they have a running foot right there you see the movement uh, lines right there they pronounce as a ka or kash and then uh, another foot uh, they mean stand or the foot itself the kin and the goop and then, of course, there's essence itself with the bull head right there, exaggerating as the key. If this is the essence itself, which what is the essence of your being, but the soul itself, right? And then uh, the Latin word, the actum and the gestum. Here you can see that it even I write it. 
G right there. I want you to understand it doesn't pronounce as it's a hard G G. It's a soft G as a J sound or gestum. Okay. Of course, it becomes the gesture also in English. Uh, so with everything to do with the action itself, the argo in Latin is to lead. This actually comes directly from the Greek word. You can see the A sound and the G sound, and then the Greek of course argo and to lead and to do something which is to add, right? And then the uh, agieren in German and also means to do something and to act. You can see that these are supposedly different system, but why are they following the same sound, right? And then uh, the German gen, gen means go. Look at this. This is an ancient, very ancient, more than 2,000 years old uh, phrase in uh, Chinese. It means that it's talking about the eternal movement of the cosmos. And the movement, it's the word itself, it says gin, um, gin and gin. Okay, can you see that? And uh, as time goes by, the form, um, the uh, the philosophy of Chinese actually, this is very strong. This is what we call the kin, the f uh, the male uh, cosmos that the male part of the cosmos that push f forward. And of course, you have the English word kinesis, which came from the Greek word kinesis, and which is motion. And we have a Chinese word like that too. That means eternity itself. But you, if you look at the West, you also have the Phoenician uh, sign right there, the head and the foot. You can see, you see that? It also means this eternal uh, turn itself, the circuit itself, the eternal cosmic movement. And of course, you know, from Latin, you, you can easily go to the goal and then the, also the back to the gist. Uh, the center, the center that uh, generate all this circular motion. And then the gist itself can also understand as the, the spirit or the essence of something. And in German, the Geist, look at how similar these two words are. Uh, the Geist itself is, means the spirit, the sight, the ghost, and also it means the intellect, the mind. So you can see that it's very, very similar. And then if we look at the West, of course, in metaphysics, Aristotle have this, this, in, uh, this Greek phrase, which translated will mean the energy of the mind is the essence of life or some people will translate it as the energy of thought is life so it means the thought itself it's action uh, push you to action but what is this mysterious spark that ignite that motion you will see that in all early writing system this is all Sumerian will represent it by this and this between Sumerian and Greek this is uh, a hieroglyph and this is Chinese and um, the hieroglyph also used this as to mean the heart and the head. And also this is linear B, which is proto-Greek. And Chinese actually has a array of these signs. All means the leader, the mind, and the head itself. And then even to the uh, uh, Hungarian runic, they have the same sign, carrying the same sound like this in Chinese. And they all mean the head itself. And how can everything be so coincident? So I will show you one thing in the West, if you are familiar. Uh, Athena is known to be born from the head of the Zeus, right? And then this is Athena. Look at her name. She's the goddess of wisdom and the courage. And now you want to understand Athena as the god of war. But no, the most principal thing is that she is the god of wisdom. But how is how I can... Uh, explain to you just through her name. Athena means coming from the head of uh, Zeus itself. Look at that. This is R in ancient Greek. And this is the ancient Greek writing of Athena. Okay, of, of Theta. This is Theta itself, the writing. So you can see that um, the, the energy that come out from the mind itself. But look at, this is a Chinese word. This is actually mean the thought, the conscious in Chinese. Look at how similar they were, okay? So I have actually a very complicated map right here to show you how a little uh, essence there that come to become different thing. But I think I am not going to show you this time. I will, um, I will stop a little bit right there. Okay, um, 
I will um, I will continue with the thought right there. Uh, you will see that from ancient uh, Greek and ancient Chinese from the east and west, you will see you keep saying that they don't have any communication. But why can they understand things so conceptually the same way? It but everything is hidden under all this ancient writing in a very very subtle way we have to understand it through very very um deep understanding of how the human mind works but if you we keep uh, following the modern linguistic way of doing research understanding everything is going through a straight line then there's no way we can get to the bottom and uh, so this is one way I want you to pay attention to. And I want also uh, back to my uh, slide right there. I'm not going to continue with that, um, but I will show you quickly um, this uh, slide right there. Okay. Okay, the foot and the base. I will show you how similar things are the first one is the pictograph in hero uh, in sumerian and then the later it becomes like this and then the japanese carry the same sound that means anything wood and the tree look at this and then this is hieroglyph the g this is chinese gay or k means the footstool and the foundation this is the chinese the gay and goi means where you sit or where you live and then the ga actually means your home and this is sanskrit the ga which is also used in in this Gaia and anything to do with the food or the home and you will see that this is their home right there so you will see that everything is actually exactly the same okay so yeah oops sorry I will start I stop it right there um, I hope uh, you enjoy this show I will continue next week to go on to tell you how ancients start really building, really. They start uh, left, uh, leaving the ground and they start building walls for themselves, okay? I will show you next week, okay? Bye.